Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff, and with me is my Dwayne Wade to my Shaquille O'Neal. It is Mark Souza. Hello, my friend. Hi. How's it going? It's good. How are you? How's the wife? Uh, She hasn't complained in a few days. Well, that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. Always looking good when the wife doesn't complain. Happy wife, happy life. Anyways, welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We got a lot to talk about since the NBA season has finally begun. We don't have to talk about off-season drama. We have mid-season drama now. As we are going to talk about the Warriors and Celtics, they're both big victories in the first game of the op- of the first games of the season. We're also going to be talking about other games that have happened. Uh, as of today, and also probably some games tomorrow, since we do this only twice a week. We probably have to talk about big Friday and Thursday night games. Some big matchups this weekend. Yep. Uh, where would you like to start? Would you like Warriors or would you like Celtics? Let's start off with the defending champions, the Golden State Warriors. Let's start off with the defending champions, the Golden State Warriors. They beat the Thunder 108-100 on Tuesday night. Of course, I think we talked about the ring ceremony. With the backwards rings. Yeah, the reversible rings. Mm-hmm. Um the awkward ring ceremony, as Steph Curry and some other players like to call it, because of it takes away from their routine, and we know how basketball players and oh, other athletes like the routine. Like, like we talked about, oh, boo-hoo, I'm getting a championship ring and getting pandered by millions of people. Anyways. Mm-hmm. So, they go ahead and they be a Ru- uh, Russell, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah, you're about to say that. Russell um, Westbrook-less. Paul Thunder. George did have a stellar game, 27 points, 2 rebounds, 5 assists. Um, everyone actually held their ground. They uh, just had no chance without Westbrook. Yeah, well, you know? Schroeder did also have 21-9-6 and six in that game also. Mm-hmm. Their bench did relatively well, 7-8 points for a couple of them. But um, mainly uh, Stephen Curry, 32 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, was 5-9 of nine from 3-point range. He was great. Kevin Durant was 0-5 for five from 3-point range, though. Is that a problem you would look at later? No. He's going to be just fine. There was a double double from their bench as Looney had ten points and ten rebounds, mm-hmm. which is anyone coming off the bench and getting a double double is impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Eighteen minutes, you get ten points, ten rebounds, two assists. That's a great game. Yeah, and uh, Clay Thompson had fourteen points, four rebounds. Not his best game. He went five of twenty from the field, one of eight from three point, which doesn't really seem like Clay Thompson's mo. Yeah, you know, it's the first game of the season, so we'll see these guys. Like, if you're asking me if I'm worried about any of these, like, 5 for 20 for Clay, 1 for 8, one for eight from 3, I am not worried. I am not worried about Durant. We know these guys can shoot the ball. We've seen Clay Thompson score, what, 30 points in a quarter before? I mean, the dude is incredible. He shoots at a great rate, uh, you know. Kevin Durant. He'll be fine, basically. Kevin Durant will be just fine. The Warriors shot 27% from three, which is uncharacteristic. Yeah, that's They will be way better than that as the season continues. So I think they one of 82. I think the Thunder were fortunate to only lose by eight points. True, without Russell Westbrook. And this is a DeMarcus Cousins list five lineup. This is, DeMarcus has not yet debuted for the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that'll be a major shift when he starts debuting for them. That's and, good because they definitely need another player, right? Like they absolutely. definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They are, they, God, what do we Just need? they need an infusion of talent on yeah, that team. Yeah, I mean, you know? what else do they have? I mean, two God, NBA do they have MVPs, anybody can shoot the ball? defensive player huh. of the year. Um, so I, can we stop now? <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, um, so they start. Draymond off. Green surprisingly only had two points, but with thirteen rebounds, which seems uncharacteristic of him as well. 
Mm, yeah. This team just seemed off, even though they still won. They seemed off. But as they don't we do know, a lot in preseason, you know, yeah. like they don't really take it seriously. As as we know, they'll probably bounce back and win eighty out of eighty two games this season. They'll start off a little bit slow. We might see them drop some early games in the season that they would normally not. But when you're the team like the Warriors, I mean, you're playing long seasons every year. These guys are taking extended time off in the summer because of the grueling schedule. They're going to, they're playing more games than any team every single year because they're always in the final, uh, winning the final too. So, uh, yeah, I'm not worried at all. Thunder. I thought the Thunder played well, for all things considered. I mean, you only lose to the defending champions by eight points, and you're missing your franchise player. I think there's something for them to gain in that opening night. Um, I mean, you talked about Paul George. Dennis Schroeder uh, had a solid game. Steven Adams had a really good game. Now, if the Thunder can play like this with Russell Westbrook, then they can win games like this. You see uh, Ferguson entering the starting lineup for OKC. 27 minutes, he scores zero points, four rebounds, one assist. Now, if you take him out of the equation and you insert Russell Westbrook, you're looking at, you know, 20 plus points, 10 you know. plus rebounds, 10 plus assists. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at maybe a different outcome in this game, but again, maybe you're looking at a different Warriors team, but it's one game out of 82, Jeff, so you know we can't make any sweeping what I just generalizations. Said before. Exactly. So you want to move on to the other game on NBA Which opening was night? not as close as this one. The 76ers uh, come into this game kind of on a hot, on a, like with a lot of hype going into mm-hmm. this, but they got kind of handled by the Boston Celtics 105 to 87. Would you say that uh, these are two of the top four teams in the East? Oh, it has to be. Okay, but, yeah. Well, as for the 76ers, they didn't look like a top four team in the East as uh, they got handled. So we finally got to see a Celtics team play with a healthy Kyrie Irving and a healthy Gordon Hayward. So how did they do? Um, both um, Irving had only seven points, four rebounds, seven assists. Seven assists is good. Seven points is kind of below average for him as well as four rebounds gordon haywood for coming back from that brutal ankle injury before he only he had 10 points with five rebounds not a bad start to him but jason tatum 23 points nine rebounds three assists pretty good for the second year man out of duke Mm -hmm. out of duke is correct and do you think that the uh 76ers regret not just um staying where they were um and maybe drafting him or even moving up but drafting him instead of markel fultz I um, at this point, I it's that's really a hard thing to say. Markel Fultz played twenty four minutes, had five points, three rebounds, two assists. So underwhelming, yeah, very underwhelming for a first overall pick at least. Tatum's looking like he might be their best player, which is yeah. saying something well, because Kyrie is a great player and Gordon. We Hayward also have is another double double coming off the bench as Morris on the Celtics had twenty six twenty one mm-hmm. minutes played, sixteen points, ten rebounds. You know what's interesting about the box score when I look at it? You know, obviously, um, when we look at the game itself, um, I mean, the Celtics were in control of that game. I mean, they they had the lead at halftime. They kind of pulled away in the third quarter, and then they really closed the door in the fourth quarter. But you look at the box score, and we we see a lot of these teams in their first games with a lot of players playing 35, 40 minutes. I mean, you even look at the Sixers, 34 minutes, 37 minutes, 43 minutes. Nobody on the Celtics played more than 30 minutes. They really divided up those minutes amongst the team. That's one of the best things about this team is they have they have a they deep have incredible bench. depth. Yeah, incredible depth. Yeah. And Probably the deepest team in basketball. Oh, I, I would have to agree with that. Also, but looking at a... They Dylan- got Scary Terry off the bench. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Looking at a Joel Embiid... <laughs> Um, he was asked after the game if this, how is this a rival, like this Celtics 76 ers rivalry? He he's quoted in saying, "This is not a rivalry. They always kick our well ass." Yeah, uh, I agree with him. Until the Sixers can hold court, until they can win some of these battles, he is absolutely right. Wouldn't you agree with him? Yeah, it just when it comes to games like this, and you're always losing. A rivalry is not always one side. A rivalry is a is back and forth, back and forth. Like they both always love playing each other, and it's always going to be a competitive game, and maybe some fights in between. But that's but that's a different story. Mm-hmm. But overall, you need a competitive 
uh, matchups to have a rivalry, and there's no competitive matchups when you see these two teams right now, as of right now. At least. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I like, I really like Joel Embiid's uh, brutal honesty. Like he's on social media, he's an interesting person to follow. He says funny. He's things. a pretty funny guy. Yeah, yeah, but he's absolutely right. It's not a rivalry until the Sixers win these games. Now, can they win these games? Sure, they have a talented team, but they're young. They got to win. Let's start off with beating the Celtics when they have them at home. You know, before we talk about them going on the road to Boston to win, as we know it's a tough place to play, uh, always for an opposing team. But if they can hold court at home, if they can beat Boston at home, then you, I think you might start to see this as becoming a rivalry. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely could see that. They still are a young team. They have a, definitely a bright future ahead of them. They have a lot to improve on, both on the defensive side and offensive side. But... Like these guys are still young, they're in like the young, the oldest players like of those main guys is like what Embiid is like what twenty six twenty seven not even he's like twenty three maybe Embiid is he really that young Joel Embiid I mean I gotta look this up now yeah but he's been in the league for a couple of years you you go just, ahead and, you go ahead and look up his exact age but what I want to talk 24. about I'll be dang I thought yeah. he was a lot older than that yeah but what I want to talk about here is. We saw Boston. He's a year older than me and makes six million more dollars than I do. We saw Boston win handily in this game, and they didn't have to exert a lot of energy. We saw thirty minutes was the most anybody played. That was Al Horford, Kyrie Irving, and Gordon Hayward didn't even really fill up the stat sheet, and they won by almost twenty points. So I mean, I agree. There's no rivalry yet. I think the Celtics are by far and away better than the Sixers and I think that the Celtics are probably by far and away the best team in the East. Yeah, it's it's time to look that way, huh? I think it was a I don't know if it's a quote-unquote statement game against Philadelphia, but I think they made a statement in the way that they won, how easily they won without their best guys I, I having think, to play a lot. I think it's more of a line as of don't forget we're the best team in basketball or the best team in the East at least and we're proving it tonight. Would you say that the Celtics have a better chance? Would you say that they're not better? But would you say that they're almost as big as a favorite to represent the East as the Warriors are to represent the West? That's a tough one. I, I say def- that because the Warriors might face some stiffer competition in the playoffs, so there is a, a higher a little bit higher chance of an upset even if they are better than the Celtics like I'm pretty sure we agree on. But you know what I mean by that like the Celtics I, I are gonna have a I'm breeze. You're getting, I'm get, I know what you're getting at, but I, I don't. I think the fact of the matter is that the East actually is gaining more and more talented teams rather than, than the West is. I know LeBron went to the Lakers, but the East has always been a competitive uh, conference compared to the Western Conference. And I know everyone thinks that the Western yeah, Conference yeah, but the is, East has been terrible for a long yeah, time. Yeah, granted, but I wouldn't put competitive because they all are not good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, not not, you know, not all, let me, I was going to say that. I sorry, know Western Conference is better, way better than the Eastern Conference, granted. But the fact of the matter is, you got to look at the fact that uh, Kyrie Irving doesn't like dominate every single game like Steph does in you know, certain situations like that. You know, you know what I'm getting at. And the fact of the matter is that there are some other teams that can come out of nowhere and win that East, like Toronto or it's going to be yeah. It'll be interesting though to see if Boston. If, I, I don't see any other team in the West taking the one seed, but I see other multiple teams taking the one seed in the East. If Boston's able to play these games where they win comfortably against some of these better teams in the East and they don't have to exert a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of numbers in terms of minutes on their best players, then I really think that you could see them just cruising in the in the East. I could see them winning 60 games if um, if they can remain with their health. I mean, obviously Irving... Gordon Hayward both were lost for the season last year, which changed the course of the season for the Celtics, although an impressive run for a team missing their two best players. Brad Stevens is just such a good coach. I keep saying this over and over and over again, but in my opinion, he might be the best coach in basketball. Would you Would you say that that's a, a, a crazy statement to make? Well, when you have the team he has. But he's like built that team you know oh yeah granted and he he knows how to use them he knows how to use his Celtics players. are very well managed their front office is and very well managed from a, a, a very young coach also he's not like he's super young he's not like a 
old veteran by any means. Kind of reminds me of like the NBA's version of Sean McVay. Yeah, I totally like, get yeah, young I, I, and like but it, knows knows the game better respected as, just as much as anyone and respected yeah. yeah offensive mind yeah like uh he knows how to get the job done he knows what to do he's not like this guy that's coming off like the sidewalk he knows basketball he breathes basketball he knows how to make every player at the best they can be i know that sounds so cliche but he knows how to use he knows the how to maximize his roster exactly yeah, exactly and and you know it's another another parallel you can make between brad stevens and sean mcveigh is that you see their players really talk up, talk up their coach. They they're always saying positive things. They always feel it always seems like they're in a good mood, like they're in a good spot. Which, you know, if you can get if players have confidence in you as a coach, if they trust your ability and trust that you'll use them the right way, then you see players flourish and then they maximize their potential. Kind of like Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr with the Warriors, for example. Um, you know, Kerr takes over a Warriors team that was very good, but then you see a different Curry. You see a different Durant, or not Durant, but um, Draymond. Mm-hmm. A different Clay. Like, yes, those players were great before before Kerr. Kerr didn't teach them how to play basketball, but what Kerr did was he knew how to use them in the best ways possible. He knew which plays to run for them. He knew how when to give them rest, when to push them you know what i mean he yeah. he pressed the right buttons that mark jackson couldn't press so I, I i know what you're getting at and um we can get more on that in a little bit but we're gonna take a short break right now when we come back we'll talk about any other games we want to talk about we'll the, talk about uh, all, last night's action yeah we'll talk about all the games yeah got, why not yeah, yeah cool. we ha- well yeah cool yeah. you cool with that yeah cool, oh, cool. Oh, cool. yeah cool. yeah cool. cool we'll see you then Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello, all you gorgeous viewers. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We talked about the main two games of the beginning of the season between the Celtics and 76ers, as well as the Warriors and Oklahoma City Thunder. Now we're going to go on to the rest of the NBA games. Any other any games in particular you want to go at oh, first? Oh, yes. I would like to start about what I think was the most impressive game last night. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Pellies, they go on to Houston and they drop 131 on James Harden and the Rockets. 131, 112, the Pelicans win. Impressive opening win on the road to start the season for the Pelicans. Jeff, what are your initial thoughts when you saw that? Well, with... A guy coming off your bench and scoring 25 points for Who the, was that? Julius Randle. Okay. And with Anthony Davis having 32.16 rebounds and Peyton having a 10 10 10 10 10 10 10, 10 3 10 triple double, which is pretty cool of having an exact 10 10 10 game because I that's just I like I like the three in a row right there. And Miritich, Nikola Miritich had a 30 point 10 rebound game. Which is also incredibly good. We have two guys that had over thirty point at thirty points and at least ten rebounds each. That's a pretty good game. I just want to know where the heck was the Rockets' uh, defense when you allow Miritich, Anthony Davis? Are you ready for these numbers, Jeff? Uh-huh. Miritich, Anthony Davis, and Julius Randle off the bench. They combined for eighty-seven points. They combined for twenty-four, no, thirty-four rebounds, 
and then add Payton's 10. So that's 44 rebounds and over four 14 players. assists. Jesus, man. Like, the Rockets, they need to defend Three better. Three players on the Pelicans had 10 rebounds or more. Miritich, 6 of 8 from 3. Randall, 2 of 4 from 3. I mean, you have to defend the perimeter better. You have to defend better overall. As Anthony Crash Davis. the board. When three guys have more, that had 10 rebounds or more, and another guy has eight rebounds. So almost three, four. 87 points between three players. Almost four guys had 10 rebounds or more, but three had 10 rebounds or more. That's, that's not inexcusable. The Pelicans shoot 53%, 40% from three. Uh, God, just. The Rockets, I know that defending is always going to take a backseat to their offense as you have guys like Chris Paul, James Harden, Clint Capella. You have, you know, um, other players off the bench. The Houston bench, Rockets but. had seven blocks to the Pelicans three, but look at this stat. I want to show you this one. In assist, Pelicans had 36 assists compared to Houston's only 21 combined yeah, assists. Yeah, a big difference. That is a huge difference. When more than 10 assists is the difference between you and your opponent. There's a reason they won the game. And Carmelo Anthony makes you a worse team when he's on the court. I will stick by that statement. And his 27 minutes, uh, nine points on three of 10, shooting one of five from downtown and four rebounds. I think that we're going to see a lot of lines, a lot of box scores that look like this for Carmelo this year. What do you think well, about that? Coming off the, looking at the bench players, Eric Gordon had 21 points coming off the bench and played almost 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a he better player. He led the player. team in points. The guy off the bench led the team in points with 21 points. Not a great game by Harden. I mean, the Rockets scored 112 points. So we can talk about their offense. We can talk about maybe Harden not having a true Harden-like performance. But they scored enough points to win. It's obviously defensively where they just ruined their chances of winning this game. You want to hear? I, I said assist was a big factor. Here's a bigger one. 54 rebounds compared to 37 Pelicans over Houston. Yeah, the Pelicans That's just came to play. 14 offensive rebounds by the Pelicans, only 8 by Houston. So, does this game make you worry about the rockets at all it's just one they game. need to work on their defense because that's 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 a problem i one team gets 131 points that's a lot of points for one game and when they out rebound you by almost 20 rebounds that's a serious problem the rockets i'll get to this later on but here's a sneak peek for you they have a huge game this weekend on saturday night it's going to be the game of the night at least probably the game of the weekend actually the game but on saturday don't look it up yet you're gonna ruin it for yourself come on i'm telling you not to watch i'm not looking at don't it don't watch the extended trailer okay the extended <laughs> trailer i think i already know what the game is because they probably promoted it a bunch just relax anyways they have a big game coming up but is this a statement game for the pelicans I, yes absolutely this I, I thought they would be ac team this team could be in the top five yeah, we'll see if they can build on this. I, uh, I know one game you're over exaggerating, of course, but they get this the is Kings a... next game. They're probably going to win that okay, game. Okay, so two and zero. Oh. So this team can be a huge thorn in the sides of other Western Conference contenders. Yeah, I mean, if you get 87 points from your front line, I mean, Jesus, they're you're going to win a lot of games. But playing you know? that consistently good is also a big tall, a tall, tall mm -hmm. glass of water to order. What, what the hell a did tall, I just say? Uh, no, I don't a think A tall that's, order? A tall order, but... A, a tall glass of water to order. I'm going to keep that saying. Yeah, that's... You should just throw that one away. Okay, fine. Hold on. Let me throw it away. There it and goes. it's gone. All right, so tell me about the other... Any other game last night that is interesting to you. Oh, uh, Raptors and Cavaliers. Cavaliers. Kawhi Leonard in his debut with the Raptors, 24 points, 12 rebounds in their tw in their 116-104 win over the Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the spectrum, the San Antonio Spurs with the DeMar DeRozan, as we're looking at the trade there, DeMar DeRozan had 28 points and 8 rebounds. Cool. So they so, both had very good games in their debut with the new their new team. Yeah, so let's talk about the Raptors. You know, they win 116-104. I think that's pretty normal. I think we all expected that to happen, right? What, them winning? Yeah, I went like oh, I was like uh, them winning by comfortable margin, like you know, uh, like, twelve points. Yeah, that's comfortable. Kevin Love, you know, he's now the focal point of that offense uh, for the Cavaliers, and he's a good player, but he's more of a secondary type player. I don't think he's a franchise player. 
Um, twenty one points. Maybe in not anymore. Minutes. He could. He he was kind of one with Minnesota. He was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I mean, he. I feel like he had a decent game. He's only five of eighteen, so he could have shot the ball a little bit better. But um, as a team, you know, they only shot forty percent. It's just hard to tell me where this team is going to find a lot of scoring um, down the road. We saw Colin Sexton, Colin Sexton in his first NBA maybe action. He got made fun of a lot as a kid when his last name is Sexton. Yeah, maybe some some dumb kids. Yeah, I'm immature, sorry. You know kids. They're always mean. So Kids are cruel. Yeah, so Colin Sexton, nine points, three rebounds in 18 minutes. Um, I think that's a decent start for him. We'll see him. He'll, he'll grow into that role. He'll play more than 18 minutes down the road. Uh, Kyle Lowry, we got to talk about, because 27 points and eight assists is a pretty good game. In his own right, compared to Kawhi Leonard's twenty four yeah. and twelve, they are that they are a good one two punch. If you look at both their stats, combined. absolutely, this team is going to go as far as Kyle, Kyle Lowry and Kawhi Leonard. Jesus, are hard names to say fast. Kyle uh, Lowry, Kyle, La- Ky- Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry, and Kawhi, and Kawhi Leonard, Leonard. Ka- Kyle Lowry, Kawhi Leonard, Kyle, La- Kyle yeah. Lowry. Yeah, exactly. So what's what's their what's their couple name? Kawhi Lowry and Kyle Leonard. Ka- what? <laughs> Ka- Kawhi, maybe. I said, um, I said Kawhi Lowry and Kyle Leonard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was a total unintentional blurb. Uh, how about Ka- uh, Lowry? They got a lot of good Lownard. names. They're Lownard. They have a lot of good names on this Le- team. Sergi Lowry, Baca. Leonard, Len, Lenry, Lenry. That's their couple name. All Lenry. Right. So this team will go as far as they can take them. Uh, those two. Uh, Tristan Thompson, a non-factor for me. Three points. I mean, he had 13 rebounds. 13 rebounds is not uh, like three points. Yeah, that's that's terrible. But 13 rebounds ain't a bad day. It's not bad, but well, you okay, just have to you, score a little you bit switch more. Switch those two. Is that is is that a good game? Uh, no, I think that it's somewhere in the middle. Like I, you know, if he could get 10 points and 13 rebounds, I, I think that'd be considered a I good mean, game. A great game. That's a double double. Yeah, well, I don't know Can about I get great. A double double with grilled onions. Nobody understands that joke unless they In-N-Out? know about In and Out. Okay, yeah. everyone knows In and Out's not national. I know, I know, I know. But even in the East Coast, they know about In and Out. Yeah, but they don't know what's on the menu. Okay, what a burger. Which I had a water burger for the Anyways, first time. Anyways, what okay. about in any other interesting games that happened last night? Maybe one that happened. I don't know. Down in Texas. Oh, you mean between the two number one pick and number three pick between the Dallas Mavericks? And the I Phoenix wasn't talking Suns? about that game. You weren't. I was talking about oh, that was in Phoenix. But maybe uh, two teams that are looking to make the playoffs this year. That's a little harsh. Timberwolves and Spurs. Didn't we just talk about that? You just mentioned Demar oh, Derozan. Oh, yeah, Derozan. Yeah. Well, in San Antonio, Lamarcus Aldridge dominated this game because he had twenty-one points and nineteen rebounds. He almost had a twenty-twenty game. Yeah, and you know who didn't dominate this game? Carl Anthony Towns. Eight points in 22 minutes. He fouled out in 22 minutes. Nine rebounds. Probably making Jimmy Butler more mad. So That's <laughs> that's not how you want your franchise player. Because that is a franchise guy, is it not? Yeah, Jimmy Butler still with the Timberwolves. He you know, had 23 points on 23 shots. Not the greatest. You know who I'm surprised had a lot of playing time was Derrick Rose. He played for 31 minutes and only had 8 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 3 of 12 from the field, 0 oh and 2 from 3. Um, that's... Yeah, they went with a small lineup a lot with Teague, Butler, and Derrick Rose. Teague had a pretty good game. Teague had 27 points. Mm-hmm. Butler had 23 points and 7 rebounds, and Andrew Wiggins had 20 points and 6 rebounds. So there was some there was some positive to this. They only lost by four points. There was some positive to this. They had they had guys that look good, but I don't think Butler's gonna stay for the whole season, maybe not even till all star break. And but the Spurs on the hand, DeMar DeRozan really showed up, twenty eight points, four rebounds, four assists, with Aldridge twenty one points and nineteen rebounds. Rudy Gay had eighteen points also. That is a pretty stellar uh performance from your starting one of your, your three guys in your starting lineup, no? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So what do you, do you make anything of this game? Any final thoughts? DeRozan might be a good trade for San Antonio, and they might steal a playoff spot. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Mavericks and the Suns. Notable because we had Aiton in his first NBA game against Luka Doncic in his first NBA game. Uh, you know, the games that matter. Of course, they played in the preseason, but their first regular real season. regular season NBA game. Aiton Phoenix, was better. 
Phoenix dominates Dallas, 121-100. So what did Aiton do? Aiton had 18 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 8 from 11 from the field. Granted, he's an inside player, and that's that should be his mm-hmm. average. But one steal and one block, that's a pretty good game for Aiton. And as for Doncic, he had 10 points himself, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. So they roughly had a kind of the same game, but Aiton had a double-double. Um, Doncic kind of lackluster in his points, but still eight rebounds is pretty good for a guard. He went five of 16, 0 from five from three point range, which should that be a concern? No, it's a first game. I mean, there's nerves. It's, um, it's, it'll take some games before he's super comfortable, but he started out really hot in this game and then he kind of faded off. Um, maybe because, you know, being in the NBA, it's different. It's a different game. He's coming from overseas where he did play super, uh, super good, but well, he, he is going to have to adjust to maybe the um, athleticism. You know, like it, it's going to take more energy for him to do this on a daily. I night. am going to agree with you on he did very well in uh, in Europe, but I have to point out the Europe players don't compare to NBA players. No, they don't. But they are usually better than the college game, so it's like somewhere in between. Like, um, he, it, it's all—it's a whole nother level. Though, that's yeah, for sure. it's it's going to take more. He's going to have to um, assert more energy every night to be a good player in the NBA. Whereas he probably doesn't have to do that night in night out in Europe. But mm-hmm. regardless, well, speaking of first over, first round picks, Josh Jackson came off the bench, but also had 18 points. So I wasn't bad for him either. I think it's good for him that he gets to go back on the bench because they kind of just gave him then, the keys. Wait and a like, minute. Hold this show. How are we not talking about Devin Booker right now? 35 points, 4 rebounds, I talk assists. about him all the time. He's super good. I think the the Suns are a sneaky, okay team. Like I He's, don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think that they could finish in the top Booker 11. with 35 points, went 12 of 19 from the field, 6 three-pointers out of 10, which is great. But he did have four fouls, so that would be kind of an issue in my opinion. Devin Booker, I think, has a good chance to be an all-star this year. Oh, absolutely. Like, with, he can if shoot. He, if he plays like with 35 points, he should up his rebound. Maybe not maybe as a rebound, but he should up his assists, maybe get a double-double instead of San Francisco for 10, you know? Yeah. But 19 shots, he scores 35 points. That's awesome. You'll yeah. take that every 12 day. 12 of 19. That's, that's – I'll take the yeah, – absolutely. You'll take that every single day. You mentioned Jackson pitched in with a good game. Aiton, uh, a good game. You know, Luca had his struggles later on in that game, but – um, I want to point out that DeAndre Ayton did this against DeAndre Jordan. I, I don't think that should be overlooked because... DeAndre versus DeAndre? Well, yeah, I don't think it should be overlooked because DeAndre Jordan is a bona fide, bona fide center in this league. It wasn't like Ayton took advantage he, of somebody who's like a smaller Aiton, center or like, you know, like DeAndre Jordan is one of the top three or four NBA centers. Ayton did uh, have the quickness, though. I think that was a speed deal and him just being in his youth compared to DeAndre Jordan, who's at the end of his career, let's be honest. Yeah, but he's still good. Mm-hmm. Um, he's still a, U, a Team USA capable player. Speaking um, of centers, uh, yeah. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Anna Takumpo. Anna Takumpo. I can never. I'm so sorry, Greek Freak. But I he's love not a you, center. Man. I think you're a girl. Well, he's he plays like a center. He's. I mean, he's like a he's like a LeBron type he's player. Power, he's like a forward. Well, he played power forward. Yeah, but he's like a point guard that well, plays he's huge he's yeah. yeah he's like lebron you know yeah. he he's a big he, guy he had 25 points and 18 rebounds in the 113 112 win over the hornets the milwaukee bucks won and just to uh say out every other um, before we go to break i just want to say every other score that mm-hmm. happened um jazz beat the kings 123 117 uh, donovan mitchell at 24 points um the nuggets beat the clippers 107 98 not much to go on on that uh the Knicks beat the Hawks 126-107, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, he lost the Magic 104-101. Yes, and Porzingis didn't even play in the Knicks game, mind you, so I think that would be a Yeah, he's coming along him. slowly. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? What was the last thing score you just said? Uh, he lost oh, beat the, the Magic. 104-111. Pacers what? beat the Grizzlies 111-83. Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, did you see that Conley juke in that game where he literally just almost broke the dude's ankle? Mm-hmm. They just fell over. That was awesome. And the and lastly, the Pistons defeated the Nets 103-100. Um, not notable any uh, scoring except for Levert, who had 27 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. There also was uh, Drummond, who sh- we should talk about a little bit. 24 points, 20 rebounds. Nice. That is, that is a very impressive game. Yeah. 
Yeah, there there was um, there's been some good action so far through the Blake first Griffin two days. Blake Griffin had 26 points, granted, but when you have 24 points and you add 20 rebounds to that, how, why do you think they won? Like that that is Drummond really is underrated in my opinion. He doesn't get much love he deserves. Yeah, it's just with him and this is free throw shooting. Like he's just a liability, but. He did go three or four from free throw shooting. There you go. That's a good start. So we'll yeah. take a break. We come back. We're going to talk about there's some some big games tonight. TNT. There's two games TNT. in particular TNT. that we'll break down. Um, we'll talk about those. And then in the last segment, there are some notable games this weekend that we'll dive into before uh, you know our next broadcast that we have our next Tuesday. podcast. So yeah. So we will talk about some notable games, some things that you can watch this weekend to look for. Okay. We'll be right back right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We've talked about all the games that have happened in the last couple of days. Now, let's look into the future. And when I mean the future, I mean tonight. We have a couple of games on TNT as well as um, NBC. Just TNT. Well, NBC Sports Network in the D.C. If you're in Washington, D.C. Yeah, but who is? So, uh, Well, we have, may have some viewers in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Well, let's look at the national televised games. The first one, the Bulls versus the 76ers. This is the Bulls' first game of the season, and the 76ers coming off that loss to the Boston Celtics. Do you think this is a must-win game, like rebound-wise, just momentum-wise? Uh, sorry, which game are you talking about here? The Bulls and the 76ers? No, there's no must-win games, but I think well, no, that... No, I meant must-win momentum-wise. I was looking ahead to the other games, so I'm glad you were talking about this one. Well, Can't get it out of the way. Before. This mm-hmm. one's 5 p.m., the next one's 7.30 p.m. We won't, mm-hmm. talk, we won't spoil mm-hmm. what the 7.30 p.m. So, one TNT? Yeah, Philadelphia. TNT. I think they'll bounce back. Um, I mean, they, got, they had that ugly, you know, defeat in their first game against Boston, but, you know, they get a chance tonight to uh, play a Bulls team that... I don't think is anywhere near their talent level. I think Philadelphia makes a statement. It's their home opener. Uh, the fans will be ready as they look at a season where they can actually feel like they're a contender, at least like a possible contender. They're at least uh, one of the better teams in the league, you know? So I think their fans will be juiced. I think guys like Simmons, Embiid, Markel Fultz even, I think he's looking to rebound. I think those Kennedy's guys are going to come too. out. Yeah, I think those guys are going to come out, and I think that they're going to put it on Chicago uh, and try and get that that first win. You know, they don't want to go in two. I think they'll be one on one after tonight. What do you think? Um, yeah, that sounds accurate, but I think the bottom line is one team is starting their season, the other team is looking to rebound from a kind of a uh, a blowout loss when you think about it. And overall, mm-hmm. one ha- one team needs to prove something. The other team needs to just start off hot. Yeah, and I mean, it's the Bulls' first game, so you, maybe they will uh, the Bulls come aren't, out. Bulls aren't, like, favored to do anything this season. No, no. They're they're definitely a lottery team. So. They, they, are, they are still in a rebuilding process. Yeah, so but it is their first game, so maybe they come out fired up, and maybe the uh, Sixers are still... I, don't, I wouldn't say tired, but maybe they're just, you know, feeling the effects of playing a game already. And 
I don't know. I think that, you know, on TNT, I, I just, I, I like Philadelphia to really take advantage of this uh, young Bulls team. So what's yeah, the next game you want to talk the ma- about? The matchup is here for the 76ers. The next matchup is Los Angeles Lakers versus the Portland Trailblazers. LeBron's- there we go. That'll move the needle. I'm looking at him dirty like because, you know, the other people care about more than LeBron James. Yeah, but it's a good game. We're looking at a team, a possible playoff team in the Blazers, and I think a team that everyone expects to do well in the Lakers. It's LeBron's first game in L.A. Or in, in, in As a Laker. Season. As a Laker. So, Jeff, are you excited about this game? Is it going to be something you're looking for? How much stock do you put in tonight? Um, not much considering it's the first game of the season there's 82 of them like lebron said this is one of 82 quote him uh for that so he's not really looking at this game as a must as a major game at all he says oh, it's just any other game which uh, you should look at into but don't expect anything amazing to happen but i do see the lakers taking this lebron usually does well when he first starts a season and ends a season and finishes a season and playoffs he's just good all around but overall is what i'm saying is um uh, lebron has nothing to prove in this game he's he's just he's, well i mean he's got something to prove what, what what is that that he can come in the western conference and that he can dominate in the western conference i'm but not saying that I'm, he can't and i won't bet against somebody has something to prove. all due respect to the trailblazers i don't see them as like that's his ultimate that's his sure. first test but if they lose to the Blazers, wouldn't you say that you would be a little bit concerned or not? I wouldn't say concerned because the, let it, I'm going to be a broken record. This is the 80 sec, the 80, first of 82 games. But um, once they face a legitimate championship contender like the Warriors or another team, I won't spoil it. But the fact of the matter is this is just a – game to lebron this isn't like sure. i need to prove anything so he, he and he'll still do well it's not a prove a game it. but it might be a, a barometer game like see where they a are barometer yeah see where they are like see where they are like if I they th- come out and they beat the blazers which they should mm-hmm. then i think we learn nothing okay but if they come out and they lose now we can say well it's only the first game i think the new players and things like I that think lebron's gonna test out the other guys and maybe give them the ball more see what they can do and go off of that it will be interesting maybe, maybe to he look should, at, he should yeah. maybe do that maybe he won't i'm not sure but maybe test out the other guys maybe give them more minutes just i know preseason that's what that's for but this is this could be also like this is regular season this these games count now this could be a real test for the other players to show they can play with LeBron and they can help LeBron win. And what I'm most interested in in seeing is not necessarily the result of this game. It's just how the Lakers will use these players because we're looking at a team, we're looking at a franchise that's decided to build a team differently than everybody else where you know they don't have a bunch of three-point shooters out there. They have a team that they built that they are supposedly going to be playing a lot of you know tougher defense, uh, flexibility in their matchups where they're able to switch and de- defend the three point line. You got guys like Lance Stevenson that come in that are more defensive minded players. So it's going to be interesting to see their philosophy, their lineups that Luke Walton will use. And that's what I'm most interested in. The result is whatever. If they lose, they lose. If they win, they win, but they will see the first 20 games or so to see how this Lakers team is used by their coach. Yes, I think it's more a test for the... I think you're right. This is more a test for a coach than it is LeBron. You got interesting players on that team. Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma. Like, Brandon Ingram could be a major player. He played really he well could. in the preseason. He could be LeBron's number two. Like Usually you see LeBron having a number two guy like Kyrie Irving or, or Dwayne Wade. I just worry if you're a Lakers fan. I worry how will teams defend like i think that they might make the lakers shoot threes to beat them and if that's the case rondo lonzo ball lance stevenson even brandon ingram like lebron james can't be your best three-point shooter in my opinion he's like, an average three-point shooter at best like maybe not average but he's not the best so if it's not him as your best three-point shooter on this lakers team from you know when you look at the roster maybe it's called well pope but how much will he play like yeah. 
what will the roster look, what will the team look like on the court when, Le- when LeBron is on the court because in today's NBA especially it seems like you'd want to surround LeBron with shooters and they don't really ha- they haven't really done that but LeBron has had some pretty weak teams around him in the past and sure. he, still, he still takes them very far in the postseason in the in regular season they do amazing but usually so he has my shooters question, around him so true 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 but my main question is what, how are they going to do it without LeBron on the court? How are they going to play with him on the bench? Because he's going to be on the bench for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, yeah, maybe I mean, even like five to ten minutes. He'll be on the bench for probably ten to fifteen minutes a night. And it sounds like uh, from Luke Walton's uh, comments is that they are very um, interested in limiting his minutes early on. They want to make sure he's fresh all season if they make the playoffs. He they said that they're very down. they're very conscientious of how much they use LeBron. So it sounds like he might play like 30, 34 minutes a night. Well, we don't, maybe he won't play past, 38 or 40, you know? I think LeBron that in the past has been sick and tired of being burnt out by the Cavaliers or the Heat. Because he's, has his, average, he, like, his average minutes is in the 40s or even the 50s. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, like, I I've mean. Seen, I've seen him play every game without, well, one game without resting. Yeah, he can do it. I mean, like, we've seen it before, but, but he is getting it's, older, it's so they want to limit to him. That. It's not fair to him to do that to him. You shouldn't. You shouldn't rely on this best guy on the team to play all sixty minutes. Yeah, that's true. So, with that being said, that game is the interesting game for tonight. It's the second part of a doubleheader on TNT. So make sure to get that uh, to watch that if you're you know a hoops fan. So um, I think we should uh, talk about the last fan, game. You be listening to this. If you're not a hoops fan, then I appreciate you trying to give basketball a chance and listen to this podcast. The Heat Wizards play tonight as the last game. Uh, not too many people, I'm sure, are it's terribly only, it's interested. Only local channels. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it it should be um, you know the Wizards open up their regular season. It'll be an interesting game. Uh, I think the Wizards could be a sleeper for a playoff spot. Yeah, I think both these teams are playoff teams. He and the Wizards, they should be in like they, that they, they four to have, eight they range. Just all those superstar faces, or I guess you can say movie good looks, to get people's attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Wizards. I mean, they got John Wall. Uh, but he's not like he's not like he's notable, but he's not like a household name. If you, if you ask someone to name ten players in the NBA, they would never name him. I don't think they'll name him. No, no. maybe if not, on, outside of Washington D.C. No, no, no. He doesn't have that uh, star, poten- like that star if it name. Was inside watching DC, yeah, he would be on that top ten list. Sure. Well, no, I'm not saying top ten list. I'm just saying name ten random NBA players you know. I don't think he'd be on that list. Um, yeah, it, it may be. You know, Bradley Beal wouldn't be on that list either. So, yeah. well, it, I'm just saying, just maybe not a wizard, but like a bunch of Lakers, a bunch of uh, all the Warriors, and. Pretty much the starting five on the Warriors for sure. And the Celtics and the maybe the Cavaliers. Yeah, but I think we should take a break and then when we come back, I want to talk about some notable games that are coming this weekend that even if you're not excited about tonight's Lakers Blazers game, you might be excited by it for the next Lakers match. I see a spoiler. Do you want me to spoil it? Not yet. It's gonna be the we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. We've talked about all the games that have happened from yesterday to today and the day before that. Now, we're going to go on to the games that are happening this weekend, and there's one game in particular that you want to talk about more than any other game. 
Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, but you yeah. Do. you've been you've been advertising for the entire podcast. Uh, let's just we'll stay on the Lakers since we were just talking about them. But they actually have two games before we have our next podcast that are very notable. So we'll start Saturday. The Los Angeles Lakers. Their schedule. When you look at it, man, it's a uh, pretty tough to start the season. It's for viewership. It's not. It's not to give them a hard time. It's for viewership. Well, regardless. Um, they actually play on Saturday, so you know they're going to play tonight against Portland, who's not a pushover team, uh, a, a decent team, but they are going to be hosted hosting James Harden, the Beard, and the rest of the Houston Rockets. So that the will beard, actually be oh, is the Beard a separate starter from Harden? Yeah, so that'll be on Saturday night. What do you think about that game? Seven thirty p.m. on ESPN, Houston at L.A. Are we going to figure out some things in this game? Um, this is definitely the biggest test for LeBron and the Lakers going into the beginning of the season. We're going to see if they're actually contenders for the Western Conference against this team, who did get their rear ends handed to them by Pelicans, granted, but these two are still the top, one of the top, top, two top teams in the Western Conference, underneath the Warriors, of course, but this is a huge test to see, are the, are the Los Angeles Lakers really contenders, or is it just LeBron? Yeah, and on the flip side of that, if the Rockets get handed another big loss, do you, would that change your opinion on if they're a top two team in the West? Mm, if they lose back to back, I'd consider it. Yeah, I mean, I put I put that into talk. I would we definitely talk about it on Tuesday. Okay. So yeah, Lakers and Rockets. Uh, so it's another another uh, test for the Lakers to see where they fit in. Um, I'm assuming they'll beat the Blazers, so they'll be one and no heading into the game. But if they're zero and two, we'll see. Do you know who they play after though? So they start with the Blazers, then they have the Rockets. Do you know who they play next? If I had to make a guess, and I'm not looking at my phone, it will be. Let me scroll down. I'm kidding. Uh. My guess would be another Western team, probably the Spurs. Yeah, they're hosting the Spurs. Wow, I got that right. Yep. I didn't totally look at my phone and do that. Mm -hmm. So Monday they get the Spurs at home. So they start off Blazers, Rockets, Spurs. I mean, those are three. That's a good a good mix of three teams right there that can show where the Lakers are at this point and maybe where they're headed mm -hmm. um, in this incredibly early tests that they're that they're upcoming. So. Do you think that the next time we do this podcast, which should be on Tuesday, that we'll have a good idea of where the Lakers are after three games? Um, or, yeah. Or maybe their philosophy, like how their roster is constructed, because it's a very interesting constructed roster. It's really hard to really... Three games in the beginning of the season is really hard to determine who's good and who's not. Like, sure. We always say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Um... I think that's especially important for basketball. And right now, I think this just shows like how in tune LeBron is with his new team and how well they are working together. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see the chemistry they too will have when it comes to that going into this game. So that, so we talked about the Lakers Rockets on Saturday. Um, the Spurs and Blazers also play on Saturday. So the Spurs will also play the Lakers, you know, in addition to uh, the Blazers this weekend. So that's two good games for the Spurs to play as they look to build off of their win against the Timberwolves. So, again, maybe that's another team that will have a better idea about where they stand after these two games upcoming. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 a definitely – these games are going to show, like, who's, who's uh, really you know what this in shows? tune with the other teammates. What? This shows like how deep the West is. Like, well, we're we sitting here talking that. about the Blazers. Dude, and the we Spurs. already knew that going into this. Oh, game. I know, I know. But I mean, it's in the Western Conference. There's like big games every night. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's so many good teams. Like, even the teams that are eight, nine, ten, those are good teams. So, remember last year it was only like one or two wins that separated the third seed from the eighth seed. There's another notable game uh, that happens tomorrow night between two teams expected to do very well. The Golden State Warriors. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know them? They're a pretty good team, right? Yeah, they're they're around there. They're going to be traveling to Salt Lake City. They're going to play against the Utah Jazz. So Utah will be hosting Steph Curry and the rest of the Warriors, probably without DeMarcus Cousins, but most of the Warriors, the Warriors that we all know. Um, what do you think about that game? Warriors Does come Utah, out and play. Is this a chance for Utah to make a statement if they win this game? Do they really oh, put absolutely. the Western Conference on notice? Well, they are, in my opinion, a top five team in the in the West still. I got them at number three, to be honest with you. If they win this game against the Warriors, this definitely puts them, like, out of all the doubters' minds, this will make the, the doubters even think, huh, maybe this team is as good as everyone says they are. Yeah, I mean, if uh, I mean, you know, they're probably gonna because lose. Because Utah but... looks is always underlooked, just because the city and they haven't been well for a long, long time. Now they're a good team. Even Donovan Mitchell, like he had a great rookie season, and but still, like uh, the... he, they don't get the respect. The Jazz don't get the respect that they deserve. So this it's, is a good chance. The sad thing is, he's overlooked by all the Warriors, all the top five picks in the draft, and he's he's just the team is overlooked in general, just because. All the attention goes to the Warriors, goes to the Rockets, goes to LeBron's team, wherever yeah. he's on. You got that combination of they're not the most exciting team in the league. They're a very defensive-minded team. And then you have the fact they play in Salt Lake City, Utah, and not somewhere more glamorous. They don't have a lot of games. It's, it's not fair, basically. Yeah, but this game is on ESPN, so the Jazz will get to play on primetime, 7.30. No, no, no. I'll put it this way. They ha- the ESPN wanted the Warriors on ESPN, sure. regardless of who they were playing. If they could be playing the Sacramento Kings, they probably would have gone prime time. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding? No, I don't know. But three point mayhem from Curry, yeah, that's watchable. Yeah, no, definitely. But um, yeah, it will be interesting to see if the Jazz can make a statement because I think that the the Rockets. I had them at number two before the season and the jazz at three, but I didn't feel super confident in that I actually was leaning <laughs> a little bit towards the jazz. We'll see after these first couple games, I could definitely change my opinion, even though it's early. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, we will see what happens. So, um, yeah, that's all I got for basketball this week and some great games. Anything else you'd like to discuss? No, we're in the thick of it as of right now. We're only getting started with this season. We already got a lot of games, a lot of things to talk about. We're going to talk more on Tuesday with all these games said and done this over the past, over this weekend. And I guess we'll see how LeBron does with his new team. We'll see how uh, the Utah Jazz, if they'll manage the Warriors. And we'll talk all about this, all about, all about basketball when we get back to you on Tuesday. So we will see you then. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.